so with the driver, when I want to, I'm in front of a par five and I'm playing against a guy that just insulted me or something, and I really want to kill it, I'm going to move my body hard Absolutely. like this, the way I was thinking before. I'm not right. doing it as much anymore, right. but right. I'm, I feel like I have a tree trunk or an ax in my hand, right. and I'm just going to move my, you know, Jack Nicklaus says for the legs, the hips, the shoulders, and finally the hands, and finally, finally, the club head. Okay, all those things are true. Okay. Those are all of the things that you want, yes. but the anal you know, I love analogies. Like when you go to start your car, what's the first thing you do? Put the key in the ignition, yeah. And turn, turn it, yeah. okay? What happens if you turn the key twice? Uh, it starts making a weird noise. It starts yeah. making a weird noise. Yeah. Your body, I mean, let, all, all we have to do for everybody to get better at golf is we have to separate the extreme low-level low golfer, beginners, 40 handicappers, because those things, those people need to be taught to lead with their lower body, because they don't do it. You're not going to drive the car 200 miles an hour even faster just because you've turned the ignition 15 times. Correct. Right. And every experienced golfer I've seen is going to do this and that first. Even if you, I'll, I've had 100, over 100 people in a row, I say, don't shift on purpose, restrict your downswing hip turn on purpose, just to illustrate the point, and only swing your arms, and every one of those people goes, okay? okay. So if we separate the extreme of the beginner and the extreme high handicapper who doesn't know how to shift and pivot cor correctly, everybody else, every single six handicapper, I mean, a single digit handicapper I've ever seen starts with their lower body in the sequence. So. If you are consciously starting even more with your lower body and letting your arms be passive, you're gonna end up with this move, where yeah. there's a big, you know, you could drive a 747, fly yeah. a 747 in the gap and here. How does the, how does the player that starts with that move, what are the compensations you see that, that they start to, to and, do because of that? And then this is where it gets very, very complicated to explain to people, yeah. is you get a guy that gets trapped like this, mm -hmm his hips have reached their range of motion limit and the arms are trapped, he must stall. He yeah. must. Yeah. Then this stalls and the arms and hands take over and he gets the idea, ooh, I'm very armsy and handsy, I yeah. need to have my arms and hands be more passive and get the lower body move. Well, yeah. everybody does it. Yeah. Every, I went through that before I knew better. Right. Whereas the crazy part about this is, is the way you solve the handsy, armsy swing is to reduce the gap on when the arms and hands start. So, so here's the you know, prototypical example. Guy fires the lower body, gets it way out, arms get here, stall, arms and hands take over, I'm armsy and I'm flippy, okay? Right. Whereas if you reduce the gap, this still starts, but if you reduce the gap in time and get the arms started a little earlier, now the hips can continue to fire and your arms and hands don't have to do anything. Yeah, the, the, the typical player that's getting it stuck is here and they're, they're all out of hip. They're all it's out of hip, it's, it's there's, gone. There's no more rotation possible. Right. Then it flips, it kind of restores itself and then you're like, oh man, look at this nice finish I have. Right. I must have done something well, but the ball's gone terrible. Right, you're, that's a two way miss. So what, do you think that describes a lot of good players? It's, it's pretty, pretty significant. I'd say three out of every four 15 to zero, zero to 15 handicaps, even pro, yeah. have this issue. Okay. And, and again, I have to repeat this over and over again, because people say, oh, you want me to have an armsy golf swing? Yeah. No, no. I want, the big, the big misconception about me yeah. is I want arms and hands to control the swing. I want the rotation of the body to control the swing. The rotation of the body, will. I want that to control the swing. Yes. But the rotation of the body cannot control the swing if the arms and hands are lagging too much. It can't. Right. It has to stall to wait for them to catch up. If you get everything, your, your body in front of you like this, and now there's no, there's no connection between what's going on back here and here. So right. you're saying get it more the same time so that it can control it. Right, and he, here are the yeah. two differences. So here's number one, the people trying to be passive with their arms, and they get here, yep. and then they get right here, and then they're stuck, and then they go. 
And you can see it on film, it's as clear as day. Yeah. Whereas what I'm trying to promote is... And the difference between those two swings, in case it was hard to see it there, is that the arms and hips are feeling like they're going for most people, closer to the same For time. most people, it's going to feel like their arms and hands start first. Right. Just because the natural reaction of people to swing hard or to do anything with golf is to right. do that first. Right. I'm getting, in the, within the next couple of months, I'm going to get a fancy 3D motion capture system that's going to be usable outside. I'm going to find out exactly what the time frames are. Okay, but, so, but, so the, the hips start at zero, and the, in a good player, the hips might start at zero, and it might be like five milliseconds before the shoulder, whatever it is. What, okay, we'll let's, find out let's, what let's it use is. your number, five yeah. milliseconds. Okay. Let's say the arms need to start five milliseconds after the hips start. Right. Well, if it was starting eight, 10, 12, 15, wouldn't that be a problem? Yeah, that you're talking about 200 to 500 percent longer Exa exactly. than Exactly, and we yeah. discussed that with your iron. So again, to be clear, I want the hips to start. I want the rotation of the body to control the rotation of the or lack of rotation of the club face. Yeah. Because the less the club face rotates, the more you know consistent you're going to be. Okay. But in order for all of that to pan out the arms have to be linked up properly to the rotation of the body. And right now as we speak, I do a pretty good job with irons. I am still, after 25 years of being one of these guys, still trying to figure out from my own feel. I do it some yeah. days. Some days I'm great. Yeah. Other days, the hips are firing out, I'm leaving it behind and I'm coming into the ball like this. Let me, let me ask you that too then. Can this move of feeling the, the arms feel like they go first? Now, everyone will tell you, when you first present this to them, I think, that, oh, I can't do that, I'm gonna start hooking it. That's I'm a, gonna hit it left and hook it all day if I go my arms first. Th that's, okay. Again, this is where the ca counterintuitive nature of the swing comes in, okay? Yeah. I agree with that perception, because when the hips lead out and stall, they feel their arms take over, yeah. and in their mind, if the oh. arms take over, it's a hook. Yeah, I sorry, my hands, I, I let my hands get in front of me, and I have okay. a hook, yeah. So, so let me ask you this. Common sense question, okay? I'm, this is the ball that I'm trying to hit. Yeah. Okay? What's gonna produce more of a hook? Let me go to two extremes. Okay. Okay? All right. That's example one. Yeah, the first one will definitely produce more. How is this going to produce a hook? The first one will. This one will not. Well, yeah. absolutely will not. You can't. The farther forward you get your arms, the slower the rotation. Now, this is not the arms getting forward. Right. The farther the arm, and we all want, even on a driver, you don't want to flip it. The farther forward the arms are on the rotation of the body, then you have the other extreme. You know, Tiger struggling at the U.S. Open, so it's a popular topic. Under Foley, because he had his spine so far forward, he was doing a great job of getting his arms forward, but now he's in there like that with too much shaft lean. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. So now, you know, he's trying to stay back longer, but he still has this in him, and he's just all... So, what we, the, the point of bringing Tiger into this, what we have to avoid in the golf swing, it doesn't matter what move you're working on, what move your problem is, avoiding the the polar extremes is what you have to avoid yeah you know if someone over rotates you don't teach them you know you've seen this yeah if someone over rotates you don't tell them to restrict their hip turn you know you tell them to get their hips turning on a better level then they don't you know if they go flat they're going to over rotate if they go around the spine you know you don't have to restrict them lag yeah. if you, you've learned if you link your body up correctly, you get lag. If you're in here going like this, trying, trying to cure a yeah. flip, you get yourself all out of position. The most important thing people take away from my instruction is avoid the extremes. Extremes are bad in all. Too, too much of a good thing should be on the wall of every golf instructor's you know, mantra. Too much of a good thing. Is no good. Is no good. No good. Subscribe to Be Better Now for more compelling golf content.